So let's do this. Uh, this talk was originally done for an hour, so I had to cut a lot of content. I apologize Like if the description sounded like we're going to do a really deep, deep dive into Git. We're going to kind of do a shallow dive, because 30 minutes is not a, enough to do deep dive, and I have a lot of stuff to talk about. So let's get started. Uh, my name is Andrea Gaita. I'm the uh, team lead for the Editor Tools team at GitHub. Uh, and uh, today we have uh, a few announcements before I start some shallow diving into Git and Git OFS and all of these things. Uh, my team does uh, GitHub for Visual Studio and GitHub for Unity. And uh, if you are at GDC, uh, you might have heard about um, GitHub for Unity that we launched uh, in, in March with Alpha coming out in, in April, and we've been doing quite a bit of uh, Alphas. Um, I'm going to, we also did Git LFS uh, 2.0 at the time, and I'm going to just show you a bit of Git for Unity if you haven't seen it yet, um, so that you, you know what I'm talking about. So this was the original slide uh, of Git for Unity. I should probably have started the, the VM before starting this. Come on, you can start up. Ah. Prep time. So nice. So GitHub for Unity is an extension for Unity that uh, includes Git. And uh, it's mostly Git with a bit of GitHub stuff uh, thrown around. Uh, the main idea is to make it easier on Unity by allowing you to commit and push and pull and authenticate uh, to GitHub or uh, GitHub server and generally do uh, a lot of the stuff that you would do on other uh, Git clients uh, on in Unity, because right now the state of Git in Unity is kind of not uh, very good. And if this thing starts up, come on, come on. I should have really pressed the play before coming here. Yeah. Yes, awesome. Uh, so, uh, just a quick look at uh, GitHub for Unity. Uh, for, we're currently in alpha, and this is an alpha uh, 12. We've, we've had 12 built. We didn't have 12 public alphas, but this is uh, alpha 12. Uh, and the, you can see, you can, you can uh, see your changes, you can commit changes, you can see um, the history of your projects, and you can see all your branches, and you can switch branches. Uh, and we have some basic settings for you, so you can configure um, your, your user and, and login for authentication and where you're going to push things and where Git is. Uh, we, you can also log in from, from Unity, so you can do, for, so we, we'll set it up so that you can actually push and pull when you have private repos and you need authentication. Uh, these are the basic features that we ship with, uh, like, that we want to actually polish and get uh, up to uh, 1.0. So uh, basically, you know, like it's your usual Git client that we showed off uh, at GDC. Um, so our premise is we don't Git, so you don't have to. Git is annoying. Git is complicated. Uh, I do Git, and it annoys the hell out of me. So uh, we are trying to simplify this so that you don't have to worry about this stuff. One of the things that we uh, talked about at GDC at the time was that we were going to uh, open source eventually uh, the extension. So um, the first announcement that I have today is it is now open source. It, I just pushed the button on publish the repo uh, on GitHub. So it is now available for anyone to go and poke at the code and see how, how we do things and uh, add features, ha give us feedback, fix bugs, uh, tell us how we're doing horrible things in Unity and we should never, ever, ever, ever do that. Uh, all of these things. Uh, it's MIT licensed, so uh, we just, please don't copy our logos. Our lawyers would love it and appreciate it if you don't do that, but otherwise um, you can have uh, fun with it. That is the URL where it's living now. If you signed up to get uh, notifications on the preview uh, back in GDC, you, you'll get an email by the end of this week with this information. We have a lot of people and we kind of have to spam everybody, so it's, it takes a bit. Also in this release, uh, uh, this build includes, we haven't done alphas in a while, if you guys have been following it, we haven't done alphas in a while because we've been trying to refactor and clean up the code in preparation for this. 
and we can't get contributions then if the code is going like, yeah, don't touch that part because that, that's kind of ugly and, you know, tech debt and all of that stuff. So we've been doing a lot of refactoring and cleaning up in preparation for open sourcing. We're also including uh, LFS 2.2, which is the other thing that I'd love to talk about today, uh, which is uh, uh, one of the things that people talked about uh, at GDC was, uh, actually, I'm going to get ahead of myself. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about LFS 2.2 in a bit. Uh, so this is our red map. This is what I want to do by 1.0. And I'm hoping, really hoping, that I can get 1.0 by uh, end of September. Uh, so getting beta by September and then open up, open up by uh, October 1st or something like that. Most of these features are in. It just needs a lot of polish and a lot of testing and a lot of polish and a lot of polish and a lot of edge cases and a lot of polish. Uh, we're missing SSH supports uh, and, we, and we have PRs almost ready for, for the last three published to GitHub revert commits and discard file changes. We have these features. We just haven't pulled them in because uh, uh, polish and, and, and things. All of these other features that we already have, this is our feature set for 1.0, just the basic stuff that, that you need to do, we need to do and get, regardless of which type of workflow you use, this is the stuff that you need to do. So we want to get this in first, and then start working on your suggestions and your workflows and different ways of doing uh, UI, staging areas, and all of the uh, wonderful, interesting things that you can do and workflows with Git. Um, so, getting Git and LFS to work. I, I, I wrote in this talk that this is a practical talk, so you get uh, hints and tips out of that. So I've collected a few hints and tips of how to optimize Git and LFS for a game development workflow where you're dealing with large assets, so things take a long time to download and, and, and work off of. I would love to put branching strategy here, but I don't think I have time. But uh, I would love to discuss all your different questions about how to press do uh, branches uh, with game development and how to like organize your work and your code with Git and Git LFS. We have a member of the LFS team. Taylor is in the house in uh, here for the conference. So if you have if you use LFS and you have problems uh, with it and you have questions, you can uh, go to him and, and find him and, and ask him. So how do we get this stuff to work? So to start with, you need to set up Git. You have to have Git on your machine. And then you have to have some credentials. Even like if you're working with a public repo, you can just clone the repository without credentials. But as soon as you want to push, you need some credentials in your system in some way. And these are usually the most pain points that people have uh, for, for Git. So on Windows, uh, we, bundle Git of, uh, we bundle in Git for Unity, we bundle Git in, in LFS. So when you uh, install Git for Unity in, in Unity, we unzip a version of Git, the latest version of Git, into a little uh, directory, put LFS there, the latest one, and then we set up all the environments so Unity is using that version of Git. Uh, so to make sure that we make sure, because this is an alpha, that we actually know which version of LFS we're running, because we have features that depend on LFS, and also to make, give you a, uh, a decent environment that you can actually you know, trust uh, that you know what's going on. If you don't let it install, if you take it out of the package, for instance, you'll try to search the system for some Git that you have installed and use that. Uh, and, and and you can always configure Unity to use whatever Git you want, just point Unity to your Git. Um, because uh, Git is Git, sometimes you really need a command line. This is a little alpha menu that I really want to take off, but right now I don't know where to put it, and it's handy for now for testing, so I'm keeping it around. Uh, you can, once you install GitHub for Unity, you can uh, go to GitHub command line, and you'll get... Um, you'll get a command line that has the same environment that Unity uh, with Git is running. So you can, you can make sure that it has all of the things. Um, actually, actually, yes, 2.2. And it's also sharing credentials. And it has all of this. So if you log in with GitHub for Unity and you need to do the command line for any reason, uh, you can just go to the command line here and do the same, and you're guaranteed uh, that things work. I want to do this on the Mac. Unity is being difficult at me, but I will get this working on the Mac, so you can actually do this on the Mac as well. Uh, even though on the Mac, for 
for authentication and um, uh, for for setup on the Mac. Uh, we're we have a Git Git and Git LFS uh, that we want to bundle, but uh, we've had some technical issues unzipping it and keeping permissions and doing all these things inside Unity. So we're not actually shipping it yet. For the Mac, uh, you'll need uh, Git installed. I recommend Homebrew. We always ships the latest uh, Git and Git LFS versions, and it's very easy to configure. But I want to solve this as well uh, for the Mac. So it's, you know, like we, we accept help in patches for, for fixing this stuff. Other clients that also include LFS are, are fine. Uh, you just need to be aware that when you're using Git and Git LFS that your client actually supports LFS. Because if you're running like Git Kraken that doesn't actually ship with LFS, or some old version of a, a Git client, a UI client that doesn't have LFS, if you have large files, it, w it won't do nothing. It won't run the hooks that are required to actually make sure that those large files are pushed along with your code. So you're pushing all your code, but you're not pushing the large files. Uh, so make sure, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't obey all, it doesn't run all of the configurations that are required. So, when, uh, and that is, I've, I've talked to a lot of developers that have like repos in a very weird state because the files are there but not there. And it's usually down to, at some point, they open the GUI client that doesn't have LFS installed somewhere and then it just silently screws up with the repository. It's always recoverable, but it's annoying. So, uh, I know SourceTree has LFS. Uh, SourceTree is kind of an, sometimes, is over eager and, uh, on reconfiguring LFS every time you run it. And if it, you happen to have an older source tree, it might override your LFS with an older LFS, which is not ideal either. But it, it works. Git Kraken doesn't have LFS, so that one is unfortunately, until, until they put it in, it's, it's kind of not a good one. GitHub Desktop has LFS, and then GitHub for Unity also has LFS. So at least, and then, you know, if you install Git, Git for Windows on Windows, comes with LFS, so you're set there. And on the Mac, uh, GitHub Desktop, uh, the same thing. So, authentication. Uh, GitHub for Unity, the way that we have it set up, it shares the credentials, it uses the Windows Credential Manager on Windows and the keychain on, on OS X for your credentials, and on Linux you'll use whatever keychain is by default on Git. So if you log in with GitHub for Unity, GitHub for Visual Studio, or the Git Credential Manager that Microsoft ships on Windows, the credentials will be all in the same place. So any one of these clients will put your credentials in the right place and make everybody else work. And then the command line also configured with the same Credential Manager, so will always work. So one of these, any of these will uh, work. Uh, on the Mac, uh, the same thing, we use the keychain and most of the, most of the um, uh, clients use keychain. So any, uh, as long as the keychain is there somewhere, things will work. If it doesn't work, uh, you can always put the credentials in the keychain yourself and then all the clients will work. Uh, this is how you do it for both uh, OSs, and it's kind of annoying. Uh, but uh, um, this is where I'm hoping that with GitHub for Unity, we can get, and, and probably some helper tools, we can fix this problem for good, and your like, manage the credentials will not be a pain for much longer. Um, so. Now you have Git on your system, and you have your credentials, you can work. The fastest way that you can clone a repo, regardless of whether it has LFS or not, because you don't know. I mean, you should probably know. But if you're cloning something off of GitHub or somewhere, you don't really know if it has large files, do Git LFS clone. Uh, we're not doing clone repository in GitHub, in GitHub for Unity yet. That's a feature that's probably going to come uh, post 1.0. But when we do, we'll do Git LFS clone. It is uh, easily 50% faster than doing normal Git clone, because it will do the normal Git clone, and then it will download all the files in parallel. So it'll, it'll be efficient at it, instead of going one and one and one that Git uh, does when it's interacting with LFS. So just do Git LFS clone every time. It doesn't matter if there's large files or not in the, the repo, just do it and it will, it will work. The good thing about LFS clone is you can actually exclude things that you don't want to download. So if it's a large, you don't want audio, you can just t tell it exclude this directory and it will download all of the files except for that one so that you can have your, your checkouts without, you know, taking, pulling in all the gigs that you don't need. So uh, this is where LFS 2.2 comes in that we're shipping with GitHub. Right now, it came, uh, GitHub for Unity it came out yesterday. 
Uh, one of the things that people have been uh, complaining about is that they commit a large file and now I, it's too large, I can't push. You're trying to push to GitHub and you're uh, hitting the barrier and you can't push and what do I do? So uh, LFS 2.2 includes a migrator tool that migrates your files according to rules. By default, it's 100 megs. Anything above that limit, because that's the cutoff limit for GitHub, it will turn it into a large file, but you can give it rules to, to let it know what type of large files you want to uh, migrate. So I'm gonna. So I currently have a large file here that's uh, 114 megs, and I'm, I'm not going to be able to push it. And uh, it's committed. I uh, committed in a large file. I don't have a docket attributes to tell GitLFS that this is a large file, and I completely forgot, and I've already committed it. And I have more commits like this. So you can just do GitLFS um, migrate import. And we'll go and look on your tree for all the commits that have files that are larger or obey those rules that you've given it. And it will convert them all to, to large files. You want to do this before you push, obviously, because if you've already pushed all of this history, is, well, if, if you have a 100 megs, you can't push. But if you want to you wanna rewrite history, you want to make sure you don't do this after you push. I haven't pushed because I couldn't push. So now I still have the 100 meg file here, but now that's the size of the file on Git. So Git is only tracking this as a pointer to an object uh, file that's LFS file somewhere in the object database. Uh, so you can, if you want to convert your rep repository who has gigs of files, you can run the migrated tool and recreate your repo um, and, and just import all of those files to LFS and it will just uh, do it smartly and go through the tree and do all of the things that it needs to do. Um, which is a demo. Oh, we haven't run out of time. Okay, cool. Uh, I guess I uh, spoke too fast. <laughs> I thought uh, I thought I was gonna um, speak, have more less time. I guess. Um, so this is this is all the 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 links for all the resources that I've talked about here. Uh, special and uh, special uh, thank you to Emil for uh, prototyping the initial version of GitHub for Unity and, and let us actually ship this thing. Um, I have still 10 minutes left on this talk and apparently I talk too much or too fast, not enough apparently. Uh, so uh, I'd like to hear, does anyone have specific workflow Git questions that they would like me to talk about or discuss? Hey there, thank you very much. Um, what is the sort of maximum file size that LFS can handle? Uh, because I'm working with huge architectural models, uh, sometimes up to a gig. Um, is LFS capable of handling that? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's uh, like external storage. It can handle anything. So uh, you, uh, what we have right now for LFS is that you have uh, data packs that you can buy. Uh, so you initially have a certain amount of gigs uh, for LFS. Uh, and then if you run um, out of that, uh, either storage or bandwidth. So uh, it, it actually counts uh, both. Uh, but you can put in and take out data packs as needed. Each data pack is 50 gigs. So you can just apply 50 gig data pack if you need more storage permanent or temporary. And if you have like, you know, you've just, uh, you're going to give the repo to someone else to clone a, a team, a couple of external people that they're going to be cloning and the, the repo's big, it's going to uh, probably hit the, li it might li hit the limits of bandwidth. You can temporarily apply data pack just to expand those limits just for them to be able to do the initial cloning, which takes uh, uh, a while and then you, can, uh, then you can take out the data pack and you don't have to pay for it. It's just like a temporary thing. Uh, speaking of, of downloading, uh, one of the things that uh, you can do after you clone is do uh, git lfs fetch dash dash all. This will go through your entire history and download all of the files that are reachable for your history. This will build the cache of all of your large files so that you can switch branches uh, without having to re-download things if you're going back in history. This is, even though like if you switch a branch and you don't have a large file in cache, it will just download it. But 
because the way Git works, it will download one by one. And if there's a lot of files, even if they're small, it'll take a while. So if you do LFS fetch that all, you'll just uh, fill out your whole cache. And then you know switching branches, is, it's, it's completely seamless, and you don't have to worry about it anymore. The same thing when you're pu pushing a new uh, repo. You just do a bunch of work, and you need you want to, and you change a lot of files, and you want to push. You can do LFS push dash dash all, which will upload your entire um, large file history, not just you know the place where you are right now or whatever commits that you needed to push right now, but everything else. So if you're publishing a, a new repository and you have a bunch of history, uh, that's a good way of just populating the the, the cache uh, all the way through. Um, th some things in Unity are not really optimized for version control. Um, my question is, uh, does uh, GitHub for Unity also support um, the workflow there, like uh, scene merging? Right. Uh, so uh, we, as part of the, when, when you uh, install uh, GitHub for Unity, uh, when you initialize the repository, so you have a project in, in, in Unity that is not in the source control, uh, when you install GitHub for Unity, you'll have a uh, initialized repository. Uh, one of the things that it does as part of the initialization, and it's one of the things that uh, should probably be in, like, uh, you know, make sure that all these things are properly initialized, is setting up the YAML merge tool for your system, both in the attributes file and on your Git config file, because you need the path to the tool. Uh, we are also, the LFS team is also working on having LFS be able to call out to merge tools when they're merging binary files. So just because a file is tracked on LFS doesn't mean it's not mergeable. It just means it's large. It can be a really large text file, right? Uh, so the problem with Git is as soon as you say this is binary, like it's done, it's gonna, it, there's no merging involved, right? Uh, Large files and binary files are not the same, and LFS is dealing with large files. Uh, so uh, we're, we're working on adding a hooks to merge tools, so you can configure a merge tools that can deal with large and YAML merge or something else, so that when there's a large file coming in that needs to be merged, those tools are going to get called. So that's not yet in LFS 2.2, but uh, we're, we're working on it because it's a problem. For, for the things that are not tracked by LFS, like Scenes uh, that we're not, like if it's not tracked by LFS, you can configure it to be tracked by LFS. But if it's not, uh, we are configuring your repo that, so that the YAML tool uh, gets called. We have some UI that's not activated yet. It's commented out, but will be there eventually so they can actually configure your Git ignore and Git merge tools from within Unity by file type if you want. So they can have all of this UI there after we get all the other features in. So it's, you know, we take PRs. <laughs> yeah. So my question will be, why does Git fail silently if you don't have LFS installed? Because it happened to me, I was really close to quitting my job after it messed up my entire repository. And I would like to also to ask if it's possible to avoid it failing silently. Right. Uh, it fails silently because it doesn't know what LFS is. Well, LFS is an extension. So Git, uh, we, just, we just hook up into Git events and trigger uh, LFS, basically. Git itself doesn't fail silently. If your installation is not properly configured, it might fail silently. Um, that's why it fails silently. It should not fail silently, it, period, right? Uh, so, but that's very hard to fix the command line. You can't fix that in the command line. You have to have a tool that actually knows how to invoke Git and make sure that LFS is properly configured and all of these things are properly configured so that you don't, it doesn't fail silently on you. That's one of the goals of this project, to make sure that your environment is properly configured. Um, it, it might be in the future that we take out some of this logic into separate, tool, separate independent tools, UI tools, whose only job is to make sure that your environment is properly configured so that it won't fail silently. Because that's a, a problem. You have that problem. Everybody has that problem. It just fails, and you don't know why, and you don't know how. Uh, 
we don't have tools for detecting and fixing these problems yet. We'll, we'll do this in GitHub for Unity, and hopefully we'll put it, pull it out and actually have you know, independent tools that do this sort of verification and fixing and recovery of repositories that are kind of messed up. But if that happens, we have a Gitter chat. Uh, I might, uh, um, that you can uh, go in uh, if you have problems with repositories with weird LFS states and other things. Jump in either on the repo or on the chat and uh, ask questions and, and talk to us because we really need to know the failure conditions for all these situations so we can actually put, like, fix it and, and do it properly. It's, sometimes it's like weird conditions that you wouldn't even imagine. <laughs> How do, did you get into this state? So uh, let us know uh, when things break and, and ask questions, even if it's not just get it for Unity, get, a, get LFS, uh, ask us. Anyone else? Yes. Um, hi. Uh, does Git or Git LFS support any form of file locking? Yes. Oh my God. Yes. Wow. Of course it does. Um, uh, I don't know how I missed that in my slide. I knew I was missing something in the slides. This is way too fast. Uh, so um, that's one of the features uh, that we uh, uh, shipped as part of the initial alpha, uh, the initial launch at GDC. It's still here. Uh, LFS uh, supports file locking, uh, so you can uh, request a lock. Unfortunately, the, the UI is not updating properly for some reason. Uh, so uh, you can request a lock, uh, and it will, um, this is alpha, it will let you know who locked it, and you will be blocked from pushing. So if you change a file that's locked by someone else, uh, the server will not accept the push, and it will tell you this file is owned by someone else. Go and talk to them. Uh, and you can also release logs. Uh, our goal is to uh, build in a, a mechanism for notifying you when, you, and when you change a file that's locked by someone else, so that you get early warning that someone else is already owning this file, and you don't get into the whole, uh, I forgot to request a lock, and then now I'm going to push, and yeah, no, th that's not going to happen. There's, configura there's, there's configurations in GitLFS that will allow you to tell which files require locking, and it will complain at you locally if you don't have, if you, if you change the file. But that's always dependent on uh, read-only flags, which is, I mean, Unity doesn't really care about those uh, a lot. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, we have file locking. It's already in GitHub for Unity. It's already in GitLFS, so you can totally do this um, in, on the command line or GitHub for Unity. And uh, we just need to, roadmap needs to have a notification system for, for letting you know that you can't do this uh, so that you, you know that you're doing bad things. Or you, you have to go and scream at someone to release a scene because, because you're, you know, they're locked in. So, yeah, thank you. I, I don't know how I missed that in, in all the slides. <laughs> it's kind of an important feature. Anyone else? So I can ask something else. Um, does GitHub for Unity work with uh, other Git backends? So uh, right now, uh, actually, it might have taken out that code. So right now, it's, it's kind of hard coded to github.com just because uh, uh, we need capabilities checks. I need to make sure that the server that you're calling into has LFS. And if it doesn't LFS, I need to disable all of these features so that you don't try to lock files and the server that you're talking to doesn't actually support that or it doesn't have LFS at all, right? We need some kind of capability check to make sure that, um, that it works. And then uh, the Git, the, so there's, there's two parts here. There's the Git backend and then there's the GitHub backend. So there, these are two separate sets of features. And most of the things that we are doing right now is Git, right? All these things are Git and Git LFS, except for authentication, which goes through the GitHub APIs to give you access to, to Git uh, commands. Um, at some point, uh, right now this is all together. At some point, it might end up being Git for Unity and GitHub for Unity, because Git for Unity is really just Git. It, I don't really care what uh, server you're using. It's just, as long as you support the features that I need for this stuff to work. Uh, 
So, uh, so that's the concept. Uh, I don't really care uh, for the Git stuff. The GitHub stuff obviously will require um, GitHub features. And for the GitHub features, once the Git, once the Git backend is done and it's stable and you can work and it's solid, uh, the GitHub features are uh, uh, pull requests, issues, notifications, when someone is touching code that you, or files that, you know, from server notifications, if someone opens up a pull request touching files that you are touching uh, already, that you get an early warning, hey, go and talk to that person because that person is already touching the things that you're touching, you might want to coordinate uh, issues and um, build notifications and all of the hooks that uh, GitHub brings. Those are all of the GitHub features as well as uh, uh, smart diffing, not only for text files, but for actual scenes and images and models so that you can see the diff. Uh, Unity is a renderer. It can render stuff, right? So we can, we can certainly render diffs. So you can actually visualize the, in a PR, you can see all of the, all the diffs of all of the things that have happened and you can review and, and, and merge PRs from, from Unity. Those are the GitHub features that we want to build. But for, to build that, we need to get Git happening, because otherwise we can't make anything happen. And at some point, I would love for it, you know, I want to concentrate on GitHub for Unity once Git, Git for Unity is solid, and maybe at some point it gets split, so it, you know, it's just, it's just the community can, can take it, and we can do, just do GitHub for Unity. All right, thanks. Uh, Cool. Thank you for the questions. That was awesome. You guys uh, talked about the things that I should have talked about and forgot. Um, and thank you for coming. Uh, check out the, the repo I shall put in the... If I can switch. Yes. Um, check out the repo, clone uh, the code, give us feedback, uh, ping us on chat, on Twitter, or whatever. Uh, I might start doing Twitch uh, sessions at some point, coding on GitHub for Unity, because so if you want to, if you're curious about how the code is structured and then how it works, uh, I'll I'll start doing that next week, and I'll put on the repo when that happens. So if you're curious about how these things are organized and where things are, you can check that out. Um, thank you.